very good evening and welcome to this evening's episode of On the Record. My name is Vuyo Mvog. Well, on tonight's show, bogus colleges everywhere offering bogus qualifications. How did we get here as a nation and why are we seemingly losing this costly battle? And in our interview slot, when politics and profession collide, what does an ambitious, usually unequivocal political party do? EFF chairperson Dalimpofu's representation of Gareth Cliff in his dismissal suit against Mnet has generated debate, with some of Mpofu's own comrades questioning whether his politics and profession can exist independently of each other, and how this reflects on the position of the EFF in matters of race. Well, Floyd Shibambu, who is the deputy president of uh, the EFF, will be joining us uh, shortly, and we will be discussing this uh, issue. Uh, for now, though, we're going to take a very quick commercial ad break. Savor the moment. The crafted chocolate stout made to be savored responsibly by people over the age of 18. When bees and wasps sting a person, they inject a bitterness venom in their skins. We have about three spider species in South Africa that we have to worry about. Right. Uh, button spiders, which include you know, the, the black widow spiders, yeah. your sack spiders, yeah. and, your, and your violent spiders. That venom is in your system, it's in your muscle tissue. Mm. And the more your heart beats, the faster your heart beats, the faster the blood is going to circulate, mm. and consequently it's going to get that venom into your system faster. If you see a snake like this, uh, the best thing to do is to just uh, stay away from it and contact somebody uh, that, that specializes in removing venomous snakes. Join me on Health Talk every Saturday morning between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. as we unpack current health stories. Didier Drogba, a footballer from Ivory Coast, was named as the third most influential celebrity in Africa. When I saw him display, he's a very nice player. He always makes an impact. Drogba donated his five million U.S. dollars endorsement fee to the construction of a hospital in Abidjan. Well, there are some lesser known football stars in the continent that you haven't met. Really? And are deserving of more attention. I think we will, we will do better. The Journal, every Saturday at half past one on SABC News. Victory requires intense effort, intense effort and teamwork. When you get to it, there is no turning back because all eyes are on you. When it's action time, nothing should stand in your way. Sports Life tackles and analyzes all the sports action. This is the home of all your sport news, updates, and more. Sports Life weekdays at 8:30 p.m. Well, can politics and profession exist independently of each other? That's the question we're asking EFF Deputy President Floyd Shibambu, following, of course, um, party chairperson Dalim Bofu's decision to defend Gareth Cliff in his dismissal suit against Mnet. I guess uh, the first question would be, did the EFF leadership discuss this issue? Yeah, of course, we discussed the, the issue. Uh, the, the chairperson of the EFF, Advocate Dalipov, appraised the war council of the EFF uh, of his decision to represent Gareth Cliff. And we did say to him that we would not think it's a correct decision because we believe that Gareth Cliff is a racist and his defense of Penny Sparrow, who called us monkeys, uh, is in itself racism. And uh, we did uh, say categorically clear to him that... Uh, 
we, we do not uh, support him in that uh, effort, but we then say that we note and acknowledge his uh, professional obligations as an advocate to represent whomsoever briefs him on key legal questions which he thinks uh, must be tested in court. So we have uh, discussed that internally and uh, we have uh, given our perspective uh, uh, because as the EFF we stand against racism and in all its manifestations we oppose it. Uh, we believe very strongly that uh, all racists should be banished, should be isolated, should be exposed, should be deprived of their jobs and whatever thing that uh, they occupy in, in, in space of influence. They should not be celebrated by anyone in society. That is the position that we took as the economic freedom fighters. Now, did you call him and ask him to explain himself, or did he volunteer the information to say, I am going to represent Gareth Cliff, and I want you to know who, which came first? Now, look, uh, in terms of how our meetings uh, operate, is that we then uh, discuss in our meetings what are the key agenda items, and then uh, part of the suggestions was that, because we had heard through uh, media reports that he has taken a professional decision to represent Gareth Cliff, we said that we should be appraised as the leadership of the EFF because ideologically and politically, we strongly believe that uh, Gareth Cliff is a racist and uh, he doesn't de de deserve to be defended by anyone. So that is, that, is, that is how it came about. But then we also appreciated the fact that he's a professional and as a professional, he can engage in a representation sometimes which uh, might be contradictory uh, to what the economic freedom fighters stand for. So what do you think this has the potential of doing to your party and its politics? I don't think it will have any impact on the EFF because the EFF is coming out clearly to say that we are against racism, we are not defending Gareth Cliff. It is advocate Dalimpofu who is defending Gareth Cliff, we are not defending him. He's our chairperson but he's not acting uh, on behalf of the EFF in the representation of Gareth Cliff. Uh, he is acting in his professional a responsibility and title as an advocate and uh, it looks like in terms of their own operations in that field uh, whenever you're given a brief you have got no choice but to represent uh, whoever uh, briefs you on key legal issues that they want to be represented on is that what he said in his own defense look i don't think you can call it a defense there is an explanation it looks like it's a standard practice in law that if you are an advocate uh, once you have been approached to represent whomsoever want to be represented, you can. Uh, you have to go ahead and represent well, them. Well, you can't decline. In terms of, uh, well, I do not know. You'll have to then uh, ask uh, those who are expert in the advocacy and advocate uh, tra fraternity in terms of what is the approach. Uh, but uh, it looks like uh, from the explanation that we're given, uh, not only from him, but from other legal experts, it looks like he had uh, no choice but to take a... Uh, that case, but willingly as well, I'm sure he is persuaded that he should take uh, the case. But that does not change the EFF's position. It doesn't change it that we believe that Gareth Leaf is racist and the racism which uh, he represents are not only on the case of uh, Penny Sparrow. It, 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 it had manifested before with the case of uh, the late Dr. Manto Chabalalam Simang where he celebrated her passing away. And that in African traditions is taboo. It's not allowed at all. You cannot celebrate anyone's death. We never liked Terry Blanche. He was racist. He did all sorts of things. But we never insulted him when he was killed and all those other things there. We never stood up on podiums to say that someone is dead and is good riddance and all those things in the manner in which uh, Gareth Cliff does. And that is a reflection that deep inside him, are unreconstructed and uncultured racist attitudes that undermine Africans' traditions. So hypothetically speaking, Advocate Dalimpofu can go ahead and represent Afriforum, who you think is a bunch of racists. Look, that's, So he can do are, that for are, as long as are, he gets those a mandate. Are, those, 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 those are questions that uh, I'm sure he's best placed to could respond to in terms of uh, the, whatever he stands for. But what we know is that uh, in the execution of his legal responsibilities as an advocate, uh, we cannot interfere every day because if we tell him represent this one, represent that, represent this one, it may end up uh, curtailing his uh, scope of work as an advocate to explore a variety of constitutional and legal questions that have to be tested 
in courts of law. But he chose to be a member of a political party. He accepted nomination um, uh, and later the position of party chairperson. And the party has its own values. It has its own constitution, and which he had agreed to abide by. And if it, that meant, um, you know, sacrificing something in his own personal life, so should it be. Yeah, it looks like in the court processes, he is not going to be the ones who give his own opinions and the opinions of the EFF. He is going to speak on behalf of his client. And we hope that there will never be any member of the EFF, including the national chairperson, who will take a platform to contradict policies of the organizations publicly or anywhere, because all policies and, 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 and political decisions of the EFF are internally deliberated, and once agreements have been reached on certain uh, political questions, the right to differ publicly dwindles into insignificance. It is no longer significant for anyone to express their contrary view on a, on a public discourse because we have got platforms in the organization, weekly, monthly, uh, the meetings of the EFF sit to reflect on key uh, uh, developments that they are happening in the country and in a public discourse. And uh, th that is why we say that uh, he can practice his profession uh, and we're assured that he is not going to contradict the policies of the EFF. But he is doing so already because if whether it's behind the scenes uh, giving support to somebody else or whether he will be standing there uh, uh, as himself as advocate Dalimpofu, he will be um, protecting or he will be supporting, he will be speaking on behalf of, he will, try, he will be trying to get, uh, to get someone who you call a racist in, in no uncertain terms, he will be giving support to that person. He will be saying that person is not a racist. I think so lawyers, he's going against lawyers who represent. What you stand for. I, I get the point of lawyers. Lawyers who represent thieves are not thieves. No, lawyers who represent murderers are not murderers. Lawyers who represent fraudsters are not fraudsters themselves. But they are not leaders they, of political they, parties they explain, that have taken a stand. They explain on a position key issues. in terms of a. We believe that he's just going to be a conveyor belt of whatever, not a conveyor belt in a narrow sense, but it's going to be a conveyance of the messages or whatever brief he has got from his client. But what we are sure of and what we expect from all members of the EFF is that no one must contradict the policies of the organization and undermine its ideological clarity and cohesion. Because we are an anti-racist movement. Everything else that we do seeks to undermine white supremacy. And we do not want to prop up that in any platform that we take as an organization. And none of our representatives uh, should uh, take platform to defend white supremacy and entitlement that defines uh, the racist Gareth Cliff. What do you say to those who are arguing that you've opened floodgates here and uh, you're certainly creating an impression that your chairperson is certainly bigger than your party? No, it's never about that. Uh, if we had said to advocate Dalimbo for that he should not represent uh, his clients, we were going to possibly extend to members of the EFF who are auditors to say, don't audit loanmen because it's a murderous company which killed workers in Americana. We're going to say to our medical doctors that some of the races that come to seek help from you don't perform your professional duties. So they've got their own professional obligations in their own sectors. They must perform those as long as they do not take a position that contradicts the policy positions of the EFF. And we think that thus far, the chairperson has not contradicted our policy positions in terms of what we stand for in our characterization of the current discourse. And from where you sit, he's not bigger than the party. He is not bigger than the party. There is no one in the EFF who is bigger than the party. All of us are subjected to its constitution, to its rules, to its guidelines, and to its agreed resolutions and positions. That is how we organize ourselves. That is why we grow as an organization, because we have internalized a strong culture of democratic centralism and participation, fairly of all its members in an equitable platform. When um, the Andilem Ngatamas of this world started, when, when conflict started between, um, you know, the arrest of the leadership and, and, uh, and, and people like him, you still spoke the way you are speaking now. But that was the beginning of what we know now. I mean, Andilem Ngatama is no longer a member of uh, the EFF. You don't think this 
could I, I, have I, the I same. Do not, I do not think that it's going to lead to that. And yeah. you think everyone who is in that meeting, or including those who are not, were not in that meeting, but who hold the view that Advocate Dalim Bobo should not have, uh, should not be representing Gareth Cliff, you think those people are satisfied with the answers that he has given, and there will be no comebacks on this issue? No, look, uh, in, in terms of uh, how we've uh, dealt with these uh, uh, issues at the high uh, level leadership of the EFF, we are content in terms of how it has progressed thus far, and we've clarified the position of the EFF that we are not in support of Gareth Cliff, even when Gareth Cliff is represented by an advocate who happens to be the chairperson of the EFF. So our, our, there's no confusion about our position. Uh, that decision was taken at the World Council level. The Central Committee uh, of the EFF, the Central Command Team, will deliberate and obviously because it's a higher decision-making body than the World Council, can reflect and maybe reach a different determination. No one knows what that determination will be in terms of whether we as an organization want to infringe uh, and interfere on the practical and, uh, and, and professional uh, practice of, of, of our professionals who, are, who happen to be leaders of the organization. It, it's an issue that obviously is of, on, on, of interest uh, to the organization, but we have made our point clear that we are not supporting racists and we do not agree with defense of racism. And no one in your meeting perhaps uh, raised um, something along the lines of maybe this is a test case and something we need to look into a bit more thoroughly than has been the case up until now. Because we are a very dynamic and organic organization, there will obviously be views that are expressed at all times in terms of the direction and the approach of the organization to various discourses and developments as and when they happen. We never knew when the EFF was founded in 2013 and when we went to a National People's Assembly that in the immediate future there's going to be a case of Gareth Cliff who might be represented by our national chairperson as an advocate. So obviously as an organic organization which is dynamic, there might be different interpretations of what our members are expected to do even in their professions in various spheres. But thus far, there is nothing which uh, we believe uh, is fundamentally wrong, but it does not mean whatsoever that the EFF is the one that is representing uh, uh, Gareth Cliff. And, and, and by the way, even on cases that work in our favor, we have never claimed that we are the ones who are representing the workers in Marikana on the legal cases. Although advocate Dalimpofe is the one who is representing workers in Marikana, we give them the political support, we give them all sorts of moral and ethical support which we can give them. But we have never claimed as the EFF that we are the official legal representatives of the workers in Marikana because our chairperson is representing those workers. We are not dealing with those issues in that fashion. We leave the professional integrity of those who are engaged in professions to conduct themselves. Thanks very much, the Deputy President of the EFF, Mr. Floyd Shibambu, explaining their uh, involvement of uh, the party's chairperson in uh, defending uh, Gareth Cliff in his dismissal suit against um, uh, Mnet, which an issue that has generated a lot of debate. We will certainly be watching um, this story and whatever implications it may have in this young, on this young and ambitious party. Time to take a shot at break when we return the debate. As stories are broken around the world, SABC makes sure you do not miss out. As the stories unfold throughout the day, News at 8 updates all newsworthy stories worldwide. Globally, we are there. Locally, we leave no story untold. Make a date with News at 8 every Saturday and Sunday on SABC News, Africa's news leader. We live in a digital era, and the number of Africans with mobile phones is rapidly increasing. Twitter use is predominantly being done on smartphones. This is a very African phenomenon. Here, there are constantly new innovative ways to make the internet more affordable. With that, we're seeing protests against governments proposing methods to limit access. 
On Network, we give you information about all of this. We also have new computers, games and robots. Join Sipumelele Zondi on Network every Sunday at 19.30 CAT. The public protector Tilima Dantela had a tough time motivating for a baseline increase of 200 million for her office budget. We need to have a feel and idea of what types of cases are handling. Have we addressed the structural deficiencies that led to procurement irregularities? The answer is yes. For now, we are in a difficult situation. We are applying austerity measures. Don't betray your trust to the people of South Africa because you have personal issues with you. We need to protect the public protector and unashamedly do so because she represents the hope of the people of South Africa. I am leaving this office next year. Treat this office as a constitutional body. A view from the house. Weekdays, 2.30 p.m. CAT on SABC News. Health Talk looks into the increase of suicide and symptoms leading to suicide. The death wish grows when you go into depression after a lot of stress. And often when we talk about suicide, we don't talk about a person wanting to stop living, but rather wanting to stop living in pain. After losing everything in life that lead you to no options but suicide. I had that spirit of fear in me to say, don't even face tomorrow. After being overwhelmed with stress and trauma, it becomes difficult to have self-control. People learning tools and skills that will practically enable them to meet these challenges. In trying times, never be alone. Reach out for help to a better solution. Support should be done by a counselor or psychologist where you're able to speak about how you're feeling in a safe, accepting, non-judgmental space. For all your health tips, join Dr. Silo Mudawun every Saturday from 9 till 10. Welcome back. You're watching on uh, the record. And uh, our talking point uh, this evening, bogus colleges and uh, bogus uh, qualifications. To get us going, here's an insert prepared for us by Chris Alda Lewis. Johannesburg City College unmasked diplomas and degrees on offer without registering them at higher education and training. As the camera started rolling, staff made a duck. And when we followed them, it was clear that no answers would be forthcoming. Can you open this door, sir? Why are you hiding? Open the door. Then the institution's head arrived. His explanation, it need not comply with higher education's regulations. The Constitution says for an independent educational institution to operate, it must be registered with the state. We have our registration documents with the state. The department rubbished the claim. The Johannesburg City College is not registered with the department as a private higher education institution to offer those degrees and diplomas, whether he calls it work-based learning, etc., etc. That's the first point. The second point is work-based learning happens in a place of work, in industry, in the factory. It can't happen in a setting like this. So the fact that Johannesburg City College is saying to students we offer work-based learning is also incorrect. And the casualties... I feel robbed a lot. I feel like something I've worked for has been taken away from me. So, hey, you know, hard and sweat. Of being, I woke up in the morning just to be here, just to try and build a future for myself, only to find out that this is just some ludicrous, crazy joke of somebody who just chose to wake up and make a school. He paid 1,000 rand for registration, which included a deposit for his engineering course. Can I please get uh, my money back? Because I see two views here, yes. and I'm a student. I want to yes. learn. The College for Business and Maritime Studies was the next casualty, offering an international diploma without the department's blessing. You are not registered to offer that diploma. So because you are not registered with the department to offer this diploma, 
you can't be advertising it and then enrolling students because the next step from this is for students to come here, you will register them and you will start classes and that's illegal. The clamp down on dodgy institutions continues. Chris Alder Lewis, SABC News, in Johannesburg. Well, Chris Alder Lewis is here in the studio to discuss um, <clears throat> excuse me, this particular story. But also joining us from our Pretoria office is, of course, Kaye Nguenyana, who is from uh, the Department of uh, Higher Education. Welcome to you too, sir. Thank you very much, Buyo. Well, let me start with you, Chris Alda. Mm -hmm. Another day, another college is closed down. Eight, just this week alone. What is going on? Quite shocking what we've seen over the past week in particular because the, this is the registration period. Everyone is desperate uh, to get place in any tertiary institution to further their studies. So the Department of Higher Education and Training had been on a quite a strong drive to make sure that they educate those who want to enroll in institutions. And quite shocking what they found. Found that institutions, though they may be registered, the courses that they're offering to these desperate uh, uh, students are not registered with the Department of Higher Education and Training, nor with the Quality Assurer Umalusi or any of the other CETAs. So essentially what this means is that you would go to this one of these institutions for a year, two years, or even three years. Uh, your mother, perhaps, who is a pensioner, would use her last cent to pay for you to get a, a quality education and to find out at the end of the day recognize. it's not worth the paper that it's on. It's absolutely bogus. You cannot get a job uh, with, 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 with any of those uh, papers that you're given by these institutions. Certainly a feat for the Department of Higher Education and Training, something that they've been dealing with for years. People being robbed of thousands of rand which they cannot afford. Mr. Nguenyana, is it unfair to say you've been, you haven't done much, really, to try and deal with this problem? Well, we, are, we have uh, stepped up the campaign, um, especially f uh, from uh, 2004, last year and this year, we have scaled up the campaign to fight against these bogus colleges. It's a, we want to agree with the public, I want to agree with the Crisada. It's a travesty to our people. Uh, they are robbing our people, the most poor, actually, uh, who have to really go to Mashonisas, to bank loans, uh, so that their kids get education, only to find that they are going to institutions that are actually unregistered, institutions that are unaccredited with us, you know, when we started this campaign, we, we thought that uh, the problem was uh, we were going to wipe out quite immediately. But the more we get deeper, is the more we realize that uh, this is a, a widespread problem. Uh, it's so wide that uh, the, the extent to which it is, we, we have called even for the public to work with us uh, so that they expose, they report to us, because... The, the statistics are showing that every two weeks there's a new college that is opening in this country, in the smallest town, in the village, in this big city, and so on and so forth. Obviously, we started our campaign this year in the big city, in Johannesburg, in Bramfontein, which is a, a, a center. We can call it is a cancer of this problem because that's where the over-concentration of them is to be found. Uh, in one street, like Jorison, for instance, who can find more than 16 Bocas colleges in one street. You go to Telcote, you can go to Masha Street, and so on. So uh, it requires a societal problem so that we can able to combat it. But we are confident that it's a, it's a, it's a battle that we are going to win. Uh, and we are putting a lot of resources to it so that we combat it. The fact that last year we have opened about 52 cases for 52 colleges, uh, of which one of them we have secured six-year conviction. The rest of them are before court. We are confident about securing conviction because our case is watertight. We are working with the hawks and the uh, prosecutors. We, we are confident that uh, we are going to win this battle, but we, we, we require a societal-wide uh, uh, assistance so that 
we we re, for instance we can know uh, if if yesterday there was a, a new college in Mokopane or in Mafiking unless society members of community tells us exactly so that we investigate we fly down there we close it we charge people when you say you stepped up your campaign what have you done exactly well uh, we 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 are now doing a lot of uh, 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 going around in various cities in the, in, in the country. We have also, we are also stepping up a, a social network campaign. Uh, we are linking up with structures of society, civil society, so that they actually inform us. We have a toll-free number, dedicated toll-free number, that uh, people can call us, uh, email numbers, and uh, I can tell you that each and every week we are getting uh, uh, new institutions that we must investigate. And uh, day by day, we discover many pocus colleges. I can tell you that we are investigating more than 100 now, over and above the numbers that we, we have charged, over and above the numbers that we have got this week. Uh, uh, by, by, in, in no time, in the next three years, in, in, I mean, in the next three months, uh, I think uh, we will we will be we would have charged okay. uh, possibly more than more than more, more than twenty new focus well, okay. institution in 2016. Okay, Chris Elder, what seems to be the problem? Where are the loopholes? Where, you know, what are these people exploiting? There doesn't seem to be a consistent uh, solution to this problem because the minute you close down a bogus institution today, what they simply do is move down the road, register under a different name, start handing out flyers, and there you go again. The very same victims, uh, additional victims as well. So th it doesn't seem to be a, a, a quite a consistent problem. What I also realized, uh, a c consistent solution, I beg your pardon, but also law enforcement agencies need to partner with the Department of Higher Education and Training. That's exactly what we saw a lack of in this exercise, it is quite shocking if you're going to have about a hundred of these institutions under investigation at this point. So in the next three months, exactly how many are you going to have? So th the justice system also needs to set a, a, an example with this. You open up a fraud case of the 52 uh, 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 charges that have been laid against these institutions, only one has received a three year sentence. So the sense is that we can get away with this. We can get away with this kind of action, dupe as many people as possible, and if they come knocking down our doors, if the SABC comes with its cameras, we'll simply move next door tomorrow. So the Department of Higher Education and Training, the police, and the justice system need to sit down together and find and out a collective solution to sort this mess out, or we're, we're in absolute big trouble. Mr. Guayana, why is your, your minister sits in cabinet? Uh, why isn't he sensitizing his cabinet colleagues around uh, this issue? Why have you not actively sought, uh, you know, the cooperation um, of uh, the law enforcement agencies to actually go with you uh, than go with Criselda, perhaps, who I'm afraid one of these days is going to be knocked down? <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, you, you, you know, uh, we, we, are in, we, we have a panel of uh, uh, police, high-level police, um, that we are always moving with, uh, if, if, that always on the spot. Uh, what has that engagement delivered? What do you have well, to show course, for that relationship? Well, uh, we, we are not happy ourselves uh, in relation to the, the pace at which cases are going. You know, when you charge uh, a particular college, uh, matters are before court. You had the discretion of the court whether or not it speed up the case and so on. Uh, uh, you can't dictate the, the pace at which the court can, can, can but why you know, you, speedily. Why haven't you escalated the matter? The truth of the matter is that, as Criselda was saying, I mean, here are dead poor people sacrificing their last cent for what is actually not worth um, uh, any sent. Uh, why have you not done that? I mean, the damage it is doing to our education uh, system. Why have you not escalated the matter and get it um, regarded as a priority? 
Well, it is a priority. Uh, uh, the fact, the, the, our engagement with the Department of Police was at a high level. Uh, um, and that's why we had this panel of uh, uh, police that uh, assist us uh, directly to charge people. But, but, but the one area that is a, a, a lacuna that we must address is, is in relation to the justice system. The court processes in terms of hastening these cases so that we can find conviction, we, that they can, they can able to secure conviction so that we set example, we set uh, precedent in the country that indeed anyone who gets into this kind of activities, these are the outcomes that get, it, that get meted out. Um, that's one area that we, we, we have been in discussion now uh, recently, that we, we will have to engage at that level, at the level of our principals, at the ministerial level, at the DG levels, to engage with the Department of Justice to say that these are specific cases that uh, require a specific priority because really, as you are saying, it's about roping the poor, roping our working class, and, and, and as a caring government, we got to be seen as prioritizing cases of that nature because for us as higher education, uh, Vuyo, we can tell you that the implications of this is that if we, re if, if we were to allow this thing to perpetuate as it is, it undermines the level and integrity of our education system. It undermines the, the, the whole qualification system of this country. And uh, we have a responsibility as higher education that we protect the integrity of higher education so that you don't have the reproduction of people who are having fake qualification, even by default as it is. Because many of people in this country are in possession of fake qualification, not because they consciously went there knowingly, but they thought that they were going to legitimate colleges. When they graduate, they only establish later that SACA, South African Qualifications Authority, the employers themselves, they don't recognize this qualification. That, that's when they get in contact with us. We've been dealing with suicidal cases, and indeed, that's what has really prompted us to really step up the campaign and say, we are really clamping down on these focus colleges. And uh, we require a society-wide and uh, many other stakeholders so that we clamp down and uh, nip this thing into part. And unfortunately, I must say that without being xenophobic, you know, 52 cases that we've opened, 52 colleges, all of them, they're not owned by South Africans. These but, are for nationals but, and so on. That and we think partly, that there's no interest in terms of making sure that we keep the integrity of this country. But that it's something is, that we've got to deal with. But that's precisely why it becomes difficult for anyone to believe you when you say you are really nipping this problem in the bud, that you are really dealing with it. It becomes difficult because we know who are these people, like the profile of the kind of person who is actually involved in setting up these bogus colleges. We know where they are. We've, I mean, more than 100 um, is the figure you were giving us. Now, on a day when people hear that what, Treasury had to, in fact, issue a statement on SAA, for example, which has been spoken about for the past couple of, um, you know, months, you know, giving priority to something like that. When you look at, uh, you know, what happened, the stealing of money um, from, you know, uh, involving the spooks, there is movement there. Everyone is seemingly moving, trying to chase, uh, to, 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 you know, to arrest the criminals, identikits and all of that are all over the place. In other words, whose money has to be lost before um, these things are given a priority? In other those whose word, you know, uh, must be li listened to before these cases get a priority. It is certainly not the poor Gogo who is sacrificing her last penny to get her grandchild educated in what is, go is not going to yield any result, which is not something that's not going to be recognized. Well, we will appreciate that this is not new. It's not like a five-year uh, ago phenomena. Actually, uh, the, the, the mushrooming of these colleges, they date back 
10, 15 years ago. Precisely my point. That, the reality is that uh, there, has, there has never been a focus in this area, but we have taken a conscious decision. Maybe what could have assisted, what has assisted us, um, uh, the splitting of two departments, basic and higher education, has been uh, the division of tasks to say, let's focus in this area. It may, it may as well be that uh, previously, uh, the, the, the task at hand, generally, in the mandate of the department has been too large to focus even on this specific issue. But now we are bold as government. We have uh, a space as high education to say, let's deal with this particular problem. Because it's not just a problem about robbing the poor only, but it speaks to the integrity of our higher education. It speaks to uh, the respectability of our system globally so that we, and we think that we must be commended to the extent that from 2014, 2015, and now 2016, we're even scaling up the campaign. And we think that by the end of this year, even an ordinary coco in that village will know how to identify a bogus college to that that is legal, that is accredited by government, as, was the, as opposed to what was the case before. We're raising a lot of consciousness, education in society. We're simplifying even what could be your education in terms of how to identify it so that it becomes a system-wide issue beyond even government. Everybody else must make a clarion call to us as people who are at the center of uh, investigating them so that we claim them down because we really cannot be everywhere, but at least society must be able to identify that these are the areas that you look into to identify that this is a focus college or this is a local college. And they can able to keep in touch with us. Uh, we have a toll-free number, we have a website, we have everything, and they can able to just so that we, we can immediately okay. act on those colleges. Well, time now for a quick ad break. We continue with tonight's conversation when we return. Stay with us. requires intense effort, intense effort and teamwork when you get to it there is no turning back because all eyes are on you when it's action time nothing should stand in your way sports life tackles and analyzes all the sports action this is the home of all your sport news updates and more sports life weekdays at 8 30 p.m BBC News. We report, contextualize, and present news and current affairs honestly, fairly, and fully. We consider it a duty to provide consistent, relevant, useful, and top quality information and analysis. Our mission is to provide credible, accurate, and interesting news programming, bringing news into everyone's homes in everyone's languages. Thank you, South Africa, for relying on SABC News for quality news output and for making us your number one source of information. SABC News, Africa's news leader. Welcome back. You're watching On The Record. And if you've just joined us, we're talking about bogus colleges with their bogus qualifications. Now, Criselda Lewis, do you think we are anywhere near 
dealing with this problem. Yes, there's the stepped up campaign uh, that Mr. Nguyen is talking about. Um, yes, um, they have been trying to deal with this problem for uh, many, many years and they have stepped up the campaign over the past couple of years. But is it yielding results? Are we anywhere near dealing with the problem? While we can commend what the, the Department of Higher Education and Training has done, but we are far from dealing with this problem. Every time, you could walk into the Johannesburg CBD at the moment, but if you look at the statistics that we've got from the department itself, you've got Gauteng that is leading at this point, you've got a, a, a province such as KZN, Limpopo as well, where every street corner, you have people who are handing out these pamphlets for these colleges that are simply not recognized by the department. You simply open up one right next door. How do you keep tracking the same people one place that we visited, uh, visited today, which was in that insert, the Department of Higher Education and Training has opened up a fraud case against that man. He continues to run. He continues to run that establishment. We got there today, there was about 15 to 20 desperate students looking for place, ready with cash in hand to pay a registration fee, uh, registration fee and also pay a deposit for the for the course that they wanted to to, to take to take up so we are far from seeing this problem you cannot have campaigns in the first week of january and then the die where you will say um let us hand out pamphlets or come to a store let's check the legitimacy of the the the, the institution where you want to register these are campaigns that we need to see from january until december i do agree that yes we see them in june we see them in march uh, we see them in January as well, but it's got to be a consistent drive because the Department of Higher Education and Training acknowledges that they're sitting on a ticking time bomb. And you're going to end up with hundreds, as is the case at the moment, of students, if not thousands, who are sitting at home with a qualification that simply does not exist. You will get students coming into the SABC not knowing that what they carry does not hold any ground and asking for a job to be journalists, like the story we did uh, just yesterday, where one institution was offering a, a journalism course and was simply not accredited uh, by the Department of Higher Education and Training. So it's extremely worrying, the trend that we're seeing. And it's a drive that also needs to expand. In particular, vulnerable, vulnerable areas, the rural areas, drives that must extend beyond Bromfontein, which is the epicenter of what we're seeing at the moment. But since we've been running these stories on social network sites, every single one of them, people are saying, come to Pulukwane, come to the Eastern Cape, come to Mdansane, come to Trofim Vaba, come to Mdanduli, or wherever it is. And you see the scope of the problem when you speak to the ordinary people on the street. People have been going back to these institutions and begging for their money back and you're simply not going to. The department really needs to, this drive needs to just be beyond January, March, June, and December. Start, as, start very early. I know the resource might not be there, but something needs to be done. This problem is, is soon going to outweigh uh, some of the most serious criminal elements that we see in this country. Mr. So, well, tell me, what can parents do? Yes, you've spoken about the less than optimal response from your colleagues um, from, from like in the, in the criminal uh, justice system. But what can parents do? What can society um, do to help you with, 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 with this problem? Well, all what we need uh, from society, the, the message that we've been issuing in statements and so on, is that uh, when you, you see a college in your nearest town, on the road, in the city, you, uh, just, ju ju just call us, uh, say, I'm seeing this particular college, this is the name, uh, is, is along the street. Our team can immediately in less than five minutes and tell you that this is a local college or it's a bogus college, fly by night. And uh, we lock them off in, in, our, in our register and we immediately go and charge them and close it down. Uh, and we start the process, the legal process. Uh, that's what we need. Uh, but those uh, students who decide to enter into private colleges now, now that is the beginning of the year, all what we are urging to them is that before they decide to enroll, 
they must first demand a registration certificate of that college, which has to be hanged just, just in the reception, like your pharmacy, your pharmacist and so on, or your doctors uh, in, in, in surgeries. I mean, I mean in, in their private uh, spaces has, where has, they will... Uh, has anything, has any so, study uh, been done to determine the profile of this person or this child who registered at these types of college? Are they, for example, uh, children who cannot get um, um, places at our universities? Because we know that spaces at universities come at a premium and not everyone gets accommodated. Are those the kids that are going to these bogus colleges? Or is it uh, desperate peop uh, students who perhaps didn't do well, but who still want to study and uh, because they can't get assisted anywhere else, they fall um, for these uh, bogus colleges and their marketing and their desperation to get money, uh, 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 to squeeze money out of very desperate students and parents. Who are these kids who are enrolling at these colleges? It, it's a combination of all those factors you are mentioning. F firstly, students who don't find spaces in your traditional universities, uh, secondly, are students who have been beaten by the point system in universities and therefore they opt for these colleges. Uh, some of them, they don't want to spend three or four years in your traditional public institutions and they, they want to go to these private colleges because they offer options of 18 months, of 12 months, two years, and so on. And, and, and the recruitment strategy is that you are guaranteed to pass. It doesn't matter how academically you are doing in your exams, in your, access, in your assignments. They tell you that you are going to pass. It means that they are going to make up, even if it doesn't matter your deficiencies in that particular program. Because as you pass, for them, we are a client, we are going to invite others. Uh, to come in. in the, so there's no failing rate there. There are no people who fail. So all of those things are a, an attractive factor. They even go to universities where you have walk-ins, the queues, and so on. They recruit people in the queues. We were getting, we were getting a, a particular uh, report in UJ, for instance, that how they recruit students in queues and say, yeah, you are going to stay here for three days, sleeping here, and so on come to us, we are going to be registered on the spot, and we are going to get this qualification that you want, irrespective of your performance and so on. So young people get attracted to those institutions, and they can do it within 18 months or 12 months and so on. There are options. But less knowing that these are fake qualifications, at the end of the day, they will be pouring money to something that is not going to help them in terms of employment after that period of time in study. Well, what you just said um, saddens one even, even, even further because it doesn't, it doesn't look like there's, there's hope. Well, the, 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 we, we, we that, think that we, we're not hopeless as, a, as government. We, we are going to defeat no, I'm this. Not, I'm not saying we should uh, give up. I'm not saying you should give up or anybody should be giving up. This is a very serious problem. But uh, one is just simply, and I'm saying in fact, not hopeful that this problem is going to be dealt with anytime soon. It's a sad note to end on, but that's certainly the impression one is getting. Well, uh, we, we, that's why we're inviting all, all stakeholders and society to really work with us on this particular matter. We are always confident we are a capable state. We know that uh, uh, a sustained effort will bear victory to this campaign. Griselda Lewis, I know you're doing your bit, but is there something out of the box yes. that perhaps we should be considering as a nation? For the Department of Higher Education and Training to partner, uh, the partnership between the South African Police Service um, for um, such people, if arrested, they should be given stiff sentences. That's the only thing that's going to send a clear message. 
Can you stop them from closing shop here today and opening elsewhere? You certainly cannot. You have free reign in South Africa. It's a wonderful country. There's democracy. But democracy has its price. And the price is that you move from one space, you go and operate with impunity in the next space, and then what happens? You track this down for the next three years before somebody else realizes that what I'm actually carrying doesn't hold anything. Money spent, pensioners lost hope, children sitting on the streets without jobs on the simple basis that they don't have the qualifications. On that sad note, I don't think we should give up and we should continue to fight this problem. Well, that's where we're going to leave it for tonight. Join us again tomorrow, same time. Good night.